So after going through everything for defining the synthesis of a sound, we then have our effects that we can go into, which we briefly saw in the overview for each of the layers that have effects. And then there's also the reverb and EQ that applies to the output of all layers. So we'll focus for now just on the effects page of just a single layer A at the moment. And I did load in just a sample of a saw wave again, so we can kind of hear what's going on with everything. But the options we have here are pretty straightforward for the different kinds of effects we can load in. There's nothing particularly unique about any of these types of effects. They're just pretty capable and easy to use versions of the types of effects that are denoted for each of them. So you do have slots here. If we look in and enable or disable them, we have the pre-effects in which we can load in things like compressors or amps for saturating or crushing a sound. And then in the mod effects, we have things like choruses, flangers, phasers, etc., that widen out the sound and give it a modulation and then a delay, which is just basically different kinds of repeating delays of a signal. So you can enable or disable any order of these if you want to set it up to follow whatever chain. You can basically just work left to right and enable or disable whichever slot that you want to use that type of effect. And we'll get a brief look at those effects. We won't go into too deep of detail on each one of them because there are quite a few. But in our pre-effects, we have things like a compressor we can throw on there and load in different presets for that kind of compressor. And since this is the parentheses all version, it browses through all kinds of presets of each type of compressor and you can make a selection from the total list. Or without presets, you can go in and set things up on your own with trim, gain adjust, wet and dry, so you can have parallel compression. And then a few controls that are basically shortcuts to the more advanced controls at the bottom here. So you'll see that turning this up, for instance, the ratio, the little yellow dot of the actual value is changed as we move that value, which basically offsets parameters associated with it. And these are the ones that you would see on the overview tab for the edit knobs there if you want just the quick tweaks of those overall parameters. Though you can also get more into the thick of it with things like the ratio threshold specifically, attack and gain, everything like that. You see your levels of the input and output of the compression and the gain reduction when a signal is sent through, whatever it may be, how much you're taking off and compressing your sound with the compressors. And then you can have different envelope detection and everything like that, as well as a look ahead and an EQ if you want to take off some area of frequencies before you send it through the compressor. But overall, pretty straightforward compressor controls, and you'll see that with a number of the compressors, which since we have the all selected, this is actually the type of the modern compressor since the all has all of them listed. But if you want to get some different kinds of compression and character, you have plenty of options like the red compressor modeled after a mono pedal. But with all the effects, the parameters are a little different, but the concepts are much the same, just giving certain flavors to the workflow of the compressor or whatever the effect happens to be. Like then moving on to an EQ here, we have our input trim and wet dry, plus the edit knobs, and you can click and drag to change values of these or change the bands themselves, enable or disable the bands, change the type, and just overall have a parametric EQ to shape the frequencies of the sound coming through. Then there's a decimator for bit crushing, giving some lo-fi down sampling and decimating, which you can low pass beforehand if you want to clean it up a little bit and just basically get the crunch that a bit crusher can give you. at varying degrees of fidelity that you want to take off, and you can have it modulate with an LFO based on the frequency, etc. Then another EQ, this one with sliders instead of the parametric setup of the other one, but same idea. Guitar amp also has an EQ on it if you want to throw that in like before, but you can choose from different simulated amps that can distort or shape an output sound with a cabinet simulation as well for a distorted output. And the compressor with those controls, parametric EQ, we went through that. Running through them, the ring modulator here is going to be an amplitude modulation, which can be either fixed or a MIDI note. And you can get the characteristic ring modulated sound for different kinds of things. That can make some pretty interesting things happen. As ring modulation, and again, any of these have the presets you can load in that may have certain sounds that can apply to something you're working on. Then there's a tremolo, which is similar to a slow ring modulation if you want to think of it that way, but it also at the moment has basically a panner sort of sound since the left and right phase are offset from each other, but it's basically just turning up and down by your frequency. So a pretty straightforward tremolo. And finally over here, a wave shaper. This is a, another distortion that you can add in that you can really go pretty hard with or choose from any of the other shaper responses. Which can add different kinds of distortion and make a sound quite a bit more rich. But those are our pre-effects. 
Moving over to our mod effects, these are things like a chorus, which can widen out a sound, similar to a unison, but with a slightly different sort of effect to it. Different delays and things you can add on to that for stereoizing and thickening and such. And like the others, we have our chorus all, with all the different types of choruses if you want to browse through presets for all of them. You have that chorus all there, and same thing with the flanger, which is kind of similar to a chorus in operation, but it has its own characteristic sound. Then on to the phasers, kind of similar, but with a few different controls and sound to it, of course. You basically, with those, are going to change the frequency for how much you hear the sweeping of the phased sounds, but pretty general phaser, flanger, and chorus options. When it comes to all those, there is a wah that is a little bit different, but this more or less comes from a filter sweep with an envelope, which you can do manually, or have the auto wah on. So you can hear the wah sound come up as you work with it. Then certain kinds of choruses and flangers with their own unique parameters that kind of give them certain sounds, a phaser, a few more kinds of these things to just cycle through and see what fits your purpose best. But just a nice list of plenty of sounds with similar controls, but a few unique things about them that you can use to set a sound apart if you want to pick through and find the one that fits what you're working with exactly. And that's similar to the delay as well. If we go over to that, this is also pretty straightforward. Just delays our sound and gives us some repeats of it in different ways that you can adjust for their behavior. Like some things like the LCR delay, you have your left, center, and right that you can define specifically, change the timbre and tempo sync values for everything. All well laid out and easily readable if you need to change anything for the other delays as well. There are similar controls and a few more advanced delays like the multi-band. So there's bands of delays that you can have coming in for different frequency crossovers that you repeat at different points. So just different tools that apply to a delay or reverse delay, which can have a cool effect to it if we bring up the wet. But it's just a nice unique sound you can have there and set up with the different parameters. And then there's a stereo cross delay, just a different way of dealing with the left and right sides. And finally, a tape echo, which kind of simulates a tape style delay where you can have certain quirks of tape like wow and flutter that can emulate some analog imperfections and give it a certain character. But all the effects themselves are pretty easy to grasp and understand what they're going to do as they pretty much work how any effect of their type will be expected to work. And finding things from the different presets can easily get you started in the right direction if you want to pick a certain kind. They are set up for plenty of different purposes that you can select from. And whether it's for a single kind or one of the all ones where you're sorting through all of the presets, you can find things from the factory or something that you made yourself so that you can fill whatever you need and recall a preset as necessary. After all those effects, though, which would be linked to the layer or the program for whichever one you're working within. So these are like your program effects. And then after that, you have a reverb and EQ, which goes on to the entire performance, not just the layers. So both of them are going to get the reverb applied. <laughs> thus putting it all into a room and making the performance feel more cohesive with the different layers playing in. You can change, obviously, the volume of layers, whether you're going to do something with the vector to get some cool sound design going. But overall, a reverb at the end of a chain can always add a bit of polish to a sound. And you have, of course, presets that can get you most of the way there, whether it's for the individual type or if you go to the reverb all again. You can browse presets for all of the different types of reverbs from the same browser. But however you do it, you have all of the different types of controls you would expect to see from a reverb, obviously, trim and things you can adjust with the EQ and response of everything, how it's going to work and what kind of room it's trying to simulate the response of with the different type of flavor that you try to work with. And then after that, there's just an EQ with which you can obviously equalize your frequencies over everything coming through within your different bands, which for band one, you have your different kinds. Same thing for band four where you can have it be a different type or just the peaking bands for bands two and three with their Q and gain for bandwidth and amount there. So another straightforward EQ as we saw before, but a nice way to just shape the overall sound of all of our layers in our performance with the reverb and EQ here. Those are our effects though. And with that, we've seen all of the basic technical ideas here and we're ready to start jumping into some sound design, which we'll start doing some simple stuff and then get into more advanced things as we work through a few examples, which we will get onto in the next video. So I will see you then.